715. Councilor Tran, would you lead us in a salute to the flag, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? President Hay. Here. Councilor Bean. Present. Councilor Boschman. Present. Councilor Bezo. Present. Councilor Clark. Here. Councilor Dinatale. Here. Councilor Green. Here. Councilor Joseph. Here. Councilor Caddy. Here. Councilor Kushmerick. Councilor Tran. Here. We will now have the public forum. Anyone wishing to speak on any matter on the agenda may do so for not more than two minutes. If you're addressing a public hearing petition, you'll have an opportunity to speak at that time. Please approach the Senate table and identify yourself by name and address for the record and the item number on the agenda you are addressing. Does anyone wish to speak? Mr. Laxa. Hi, I'm Lenny Laxo, Commissioner of Public Works. And I'd like to speak about order number 216-15, uh, which is a request for an emergency appropriation of $100,000 from available funds for um, repairs to the Oak Hill Bridge over the Nashville River. Late last week, Thursday afternoon, <coughs> I received a uh, call and a letter from MassDOT saying that uh, the Oak Hill Road Bridge uh, has structural problems and needs to be closed until it's repaired. Um, I went out there at, uh, the very next morning with uh, MassDOT's bridge engineers and was able to look at it myself. There is a lot of corrosion of the structural steel um, underneath the bridge, uh, especially at the, um, the southern end. So, um, you know, MassDOT is saying that the loads can no, the beams, st structural steel beams can no longer support the loads that they're uh, intended to take from traffic. Um, yeah, so, you know, I agree that the, the bridge def definitely needs repairs. Um, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it's debatable whether it should close uh, immediately, but the letter did come from MassDOT in Boston saying uh, that the bridge has to be closed. I think they'll cut us a little bit of slack as to when we actually close it. I mean, after all, we did go underneath the bridge with uh, traffic going over it, so it's, uh, you know, it's not like it's uh, in imminent danger of uh, failure, but we still have to address it right away. Um, MassDOT came up with some ideas for the repair, which are pretty um, simple. Uh, we just have to go through a couple of procurement processes to get the work done. First, we have to retain our on-call engineer to design the repairs, and then we have to retain a contractor to, to do the work. Um, I mean, if all goes well, we should be able to get it done uh, before winter. Um, it does occur in a bad place at a bad time. You know, we already have River Street closed uh, in that immediate vicinity due to the railroad bridge work, so that's been a tough impact on the businesses in the River Street, Oak Hill Road area. Um, we also have a, a bridge that has old restrictions on it on Westminster Street, so a lot of truck traffic was already um, avoiding that part of town and uh, using the Oak Hill Road Bridge, so that'll uh, make their detour a little bit more complicated. Uh, plus, there are public safety issues because the Oak Hill Fire Station is, uh, you know, maybe 100 feet away from the, the bridge, and they pass over that, and they're allowed to go through the railroad bridge work area, but, um, you know, to reduce their response time to West Fitchburg. But uh, when we close the Oak Hill Road Bridge, um, they won't be able to do that anymore. They're going to have to take you know, go to the Claiborne Rotary and go up Wallace Road, which will add time to their uh, response in West Fitchburg. So, um, you know, for public safety reasons and for uh, business reasons and general convenience of, the, convenience of the public, we just like to get the work done um, as soon as we can so we can limit the amount of time that the bridge is closed. Move for suspension of the rules on 216-15. Second. We have a motion and a second for suspension of the rules on 216-15. All those in favor of suspension? Aye. All those opposed? It is before you. Councilor Move. Bean. You move the order to be I'll put a motion first and I'd like to speak on it. Move the order to be adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt 216-15. Speaking to the motion, Councilor Bean. Thank you, Mr. President, and through you, the Commissioner. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. I was kind of shocked when I received it over the weekend about the uh, – about the impact for that neighborhood, as you said, it's already uh, we already have the impact with the closing of the bridge up by the um, um, up further on River Street. So, do we have a? 
I know you're saying get it done quickly and procurement kind of when you mentioned that word it kind of gave me a sense of you know can that be quickly uh, is that something that you know, or is going to take some time and uh, where are we with the procurement process with other projects but my concern is this gets done immediately and then um, what are we looking for a time the best time frame let's if we can get a best time frame everything works out well what are we what are we talking I mean, I'm, I'm hoping we can get it done, you know, around uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, and I did speak with the chief procurement officer today on what we could do to speed up the process um, due to the public safety issues already created by the uh, railroad bridge closing. She felt we're justified in asking f the state for an emergency waiver so we don't have to advertise for bids, which would, uh, you know, that would probably put the project off until spring. So that'll speed things up um, considerably. When will the bridge be closed? Um, Can we have, do we have any do we have any say on that? Yeah, I mean basically that's up to us with you know with their concurrence. But there are a couple of complicating factors. One is we were all set to pave Fairmont Street uh, starting later this week, so it'd be good to get that done uh, before the detour mm -hmm. occurs. You know, plus we had a, a water main break on Daniel Street over the weekend, so. Um, you know, we had to get that repaired. That was actually done today, so so that problem is. What if we um, didn't block off the bridge? What if we kept it open? Um, I mean, it would be a you know a liability issue from the city. Plus, Mass DOT would you know would be leaning on us uh, real heavily right now. It's a recommendation, but it would be become more than a recommendation if if they felt we weren't. What if we acting on it? what if we increase uh, reduce the weight load on the made some restrictions that way instead of closing. I'm, I'm just looking at other ways other than closing the bridge. Right. And again, I know they could say that it needs to be closed, but they don't live here. They don't have to deal with it all. Right. And it's been this way for how long now? I mean, why can't we just wait till we get the uh, r r repair order to, to fix it and just leave it open? So I know it, it puts the city at in a liability, but we're at a liability. Look, I, I have no idea what our other bridges are like. I mean, we could be like that in other bridges. So, you know, if we, if, and, and you looked at the damage. It isn't eminent or it's not something that you know it, all of a sudden you know we're going to see a bridge fall in I don't think so my hope would be that we'd be able to keep it open if we had to maybe put some restrictions on the uh, on the load on it and then um, you know get work it as fast as we can yeah. I mean Mass DOT has a bridge inspection program where they inspect all of our bridges every uh, couple of years or so you know over a certain span <laughs> and this is one of them that they inspected back in June and uh you know, from the inspection report, they didn't really flag anything as being, a, you know, an imminent danger to the, the public. But they did ask the Boston office to uh, do a load rating on the bridge. And it was the folks in Boston who determined that several of the beams had a, uh, a zero load rating, which means they can't carry any load whatsoever. Um, and and I, could, I could see their point because a couple of the beams, the... Uh, you know, the steel has rusted completely through, so you can see right through it. Um, but those are off to the side of the bridge. Okay. So uh, the Worcester office is recommending that we do simple repairs to the all the remaining beams on the bridge and leave those other two alone because those are going to be really involved and it's expensive to, to fix. And we just have to put up, um, you know, barriers to keep traffic from uh, on driving the on the edge of the road uh, on the downstream side of the bridge but you know we did talk about whether it's possible to have a load restriction rather than a complete closure and they said well since the Boston engineers did you know a numerical analysis and determined that some of the beams have zero load rating then uh, you know they wouldn't go with a, uh, a load restriction it has to be a, a closure you're gonna hire an engineer anyways to do the to do the design work yes could we could we not wait for their report also to I mean, get a second opinion, I guess I'm saying. I mean, not that I don't trust the Boston people, but they're in Boston. I'd rather have our local uh, engineer that's going to put together the plan, take a look at it, and make a decision. Yeah, and I, I intend to ask okay. them that also just to uh, see if they can talk them out of a uh, complete closure. But, you know, as of right now, they're telling us. Uh, as long as we're on the same the page, it's good. It's, uh, the second question is, so this bridge was inspected. What other bridges are left to be inspected in Fitchburg, and are we going to see more problems? Um, I mean, they inspect, you know, all of our bridges, I think, that have more than a 20-foot span, you know, on a, on a rotating schedule, and we get those reports all the time. Um, 
you know, some of them like the Westminster Street Bridge near the British American Club, you know, they did a put a load restriction on, uh, not a closure. Mm -hmm. um, and they've done that in the past, like on the uh, River Street Bridge that was just uh, replaced a couple of years ago. Um, okay. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm hoping there aren't any more right, surprises right. like this. But Me too. Well, I appreciate your quick action to this, and I, I like your thought process, and hopefully it's the same as mine, that we kind of keep it open as long as we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor Green. Uh, Lenny, my question would be on this rotating schedule, about when was the last time that this bridge was inspected? Uh, would it be three years, five years, ten years? Yeah. I mean, the, the most recent inspection was June of this year. Uh, there should have been one June, two years before that, June of 2013. We don't have that report if it exists in our files, but we do have one from June of 2011. And there was, you know, I compared the two reports and there was, you know, a, no definite down rating, uh, you know, of the bridge uh, between 2011 and 2015. But, you know, even then they didn't uh, flag it for, you know, imminent closure or, or anything like that. So in a matter of four years, the, the structure, the metal structure has rusted and gone to hell. I mean, how does that happen? I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out because we have we're a city of hills and bridges, you know. I mean, I don't want I don't want another surprise to come up because you know three years ago, oh yeah, it was bad, but now it's really bad. So I'm just trying to figure out like how does it happen with a bridge that goes to to crap quickly? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure what you know if they actually measured the steel um, back in 2011 or not, um, or, you know, or how quickly the steel might have deteriorated, um, you know, but there was a, you know, no, noticeable change in the, uh, in the scores that they gave the bridge when they inspected it this time as opposed to four years ago. And uh, we do have, I don't know, something like 70 bridges in the city, so it's something that we're uh, vulnerable to. I mean, there are always, it seems like there are always bridges that are being you know, repaired or, um, you know, they put barriers up to keep traffic uh, off of certain parts of the bridge. Mm -hmm. And does Mass DOT um, put up any money to repair this said bridge? No, and that's a problem also that uh, they mentioned to me Friday when we were out there. They said they, ha they can get federal funds to replace local bridges, but there's no pot of money for them to repair local bridges, so we're on our own. Uh, you know, so that's why we need the appropriation. So we could have it replaced and replaced correctly, even with those bad structures off to the side with federal money, or we put a Band-Aid on it now to repair it, and that falls on us. Right, but <coughs> if we did get federal money to uh, replace that bridge, it would be years before it happens, so chances are it would be closed for years rather than weeks. Okay, and... Like, like the Westminster Street Bridge has been on on uh, their list of bridges to be replaced for uh, for many years now, but it's, it's still a couple of years away from actually being done. Okay. Bad, uh, same type of score on that bridge? Yeah, I haven't... Yeah, I haven't compared the two, but yeah, I could take a look at that. All right, and when we repair this bridge, is it going to be about a two-week downtime on that bridge? Is that what you estimate? If everything goes well and we're repairing it, how long will that bridge be down? I mean, I'm guessing that we'll probably end up having to close the bridge maybe November 9th or so, and then just depending on how long the, um, the process takes, it might be you know, a month maybe before we well, before Thanksgiving, a few weeks or so to get it fixed. All right. I mean, until we get the um, engineer to uh, get his design and cost estimate done, you know, right now we're just kind of uh, guessing at the time period. All right. And the $100,000 covers the cost for engineering and to have the, the bridge repaired? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Council Boschman. If we close that bridge, no. maybe I should ask the chief this question. 
can we open up Claygon Street to make it a two-way instead of a one lane? One way. Instead of them going down Daniel Street and stopping in front of McDonald's, right right behind McDonald's is Claygon Street. It, right now, if you come off of Kimball Street, it's a one lane, one one way coming towards Daniel. Can we open it to make it two ways, like it was at one time when they were repairing the bridge near McDonald's? They made it a two way, and then they closed it back down to a one way. And since this bridge is going down, and there's a lot of traffic, believe me, there's a lot of traffic that uses Oak Hill Road. So it's going to be really a heartache for a lot of people. So if we open up Claglon Street, so when they're coming down Daniel, they can take a right onto Claglon and head head to Kimball. I said they're coming down and waiting in line on Daniel Street. I'm not saying the line's going to be long. I, nobody knows how long, but it could be. They have to research it. They have to research it. No, no. I'm talking about where Yogi's used to be. Oh, they call the call the pub there. That's the bar. That street. That's Claygon Street right there. That section right there. Coming off the of Kimbo Street down, take a left on the Claygon Street, just before McDonald's, right there. And you're proposing making it a two-way. Just for a temporary to leave some of the traffic that will be yeah, because if if Seaboard is in operation and they have tractor trailers and they have to back in, you know, that could take a while and hold up the traffic there. And then it's not going to be a goal. you got to stop. So if we had two roads where one could go onto Kimbo Street and one could go underneath the bridge if they want, the shortest distance. I can't give you an answer tonight, but I, I will look into it. We're, we're proposing to do temporary no parking on the entire length. Yeah, I know. Right, I understand that, and what you and I are going to meet. And then the other thing, if we put Jersey barriers up on the right side, you're saying headed up towards Claygon, towards my house, will be on the same side as the fifty fifty diner. Be on the right side. The Jersey barriers are going to go. It's not going to be on the Antwell side. No, it, they would be on the Antwell side. Oh, you're on the Antwell side. Mm -hmm. How long do we project that those Jersey barriers will sit there? They're going to sit there for years. It'll be for years, yeah. Or until we, unless we decide to uh, pay the cost of repairing those two beams, which were involved, you know, shoring up, shoring up the beams from the river, uh, cutting out the the deck of the road, uh, you know, sawing off the the beams and welding on new ends, which can be done. It's, but since we're on our own for paying for it, we just have to find out what it would cost and if we're willing to. Absorb the cost. Uh, are you going to try to get a double shift on that, or just a single shift? In other words, seven to three, and not three to eleven. A double shift, like some places do on. Yeah, no, that's a good idea to uh, shorten the time to get the work done. And uh, you know, I did mention that to the engineer yesterday after our meeting. So it's something we're looking into. But a lot of these emergency bridge contractors do work around the clock. Just to keep the, just to get the bridges open as quick as possible. Okay. All right. Councilor Kushmarek. Commissioner Lasso, thanks for being here tonight. Um, thanks for bringing this issue to our attention. Uh, my question is more directed towards the impact on on businesses. Will Will you be working with um, uh, Mary Jo Bohart from Economic Development to minimize any impact to uh, to businesses in that in that area? Yes, we met uh, yesterday with the two ward councilors, Council Caddy and Council Boschman, and Mary Jo and, and the mayor to talk about how we could reduce the impact on the businesses and make people aware that those businesses are still open. Sure. And it, it, I know that's that's certainly not you know uh, always within the purview of, of DPW, and, and certainly we as a city haven't always done a great job when we've had construction throughout the city and in, in helping to alleviate the stress put on businesses. So I hope that. All relevant departments can can come together to make sure that you know all of our our businesses feel supported during this this time. Obviously, there's nothing that we can do to 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 take away the impact, but certainly whatever we can do to try to 
to support them and make sure that they feel um, not only strongly supported but but uh, encouraged to, to stay open during this process. Um, I, I'll just second Councilor Green's point of kind of a general concern of MassDOT. You're saying they have a regular schedule um, of of inspecting our bridges and you know if they were here two years ago or you know if they were supposed to be here two years ago that's not exactly the most encouraging thing of within two years or even within four years of we go from you know hey this is something to pay attention to to all of a sudden imminent danger you know or, or close to imminent danger we need to consider closing the bridge that that seems like quite the jump in a short period of time um, that doesn't exactly put the public's mind at ease not only just in Fitchburg but in general, kind of a general state of affairs on infrastructure in our state. Um, is there any, not recourse, but is there any any way that we can, you know, hopefully get the attention of, of um, MassDOT at a state level to, to say, hey, can you come out and do a more thorough inspection of our, of our bridges and infrastructure to make sure we don't have another situation that, um, that involves closing a, a road entering the winter season? I mean, I know they have their, you know, everything is scheduled out where every bridge gets inspected every um, couple of years. Sure. Um, you know, whether this, whether this really deteriorated that quickly or whether they, you know, missed it the, the you know, the, the first time around, it, it's hard to say. Sure. It's concerning that, you know, if they, if they inspected it in June and really thought this thing needed to be closed, that, you know, from June to June to today, you know, it, it's still in operation. Uh, you'd like to think that they're reacting uh, a little bit more quickly to, to things that they see as, you know, uh, either imminent danger or close there too. It's, um, I, I, you know, this is no, um, uh, no insult to you and your department. I, it's just concerning to see, you know, uh, the, the state has, you know, access to exponentially more resources than we do. We, we're supposed to trust that infrastructure around the state um, uh, is being, you know, maintained and um, and inspected by them, and uh, it's just continually concerning when you look at the, the state of affairs throughout the Commonwealth. Um, th that said, uh, you know, Commissioner, I'm glad it's you who, who's going to be leading this effort. Um, I think the public should feel, the public and the businesses should feel reassured that, you know, you'll move as expeditiously as possible uh, and at as minimal a risk to businesses and residents. Um, there's nobody I'd rather have leading this project and, and overseeing this. So thank you for your efforts. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dean Talley. Ronnie, if we repair this bridge, how many years until we're going to have to go back there? How much time is this going to buy us? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint, but because um, the beams that are rotting, that's not going to get taken care of. We're just going to reinforce the beams that aren't rotting. So, in the event that these external side beams, I, I just feel like we're putting a band-aid <coughs> on it to buy us some more time, and then in. Ten years, let's say, we're going to be back there doing either more repairs or a full redo. I mean, do we do the repairs now and then we submit a request to get federal funds to do a complete fix of the whole bridge so the repairs buy us time, which would give us that opportunity? Or I, I just, I, I, when I hear repair, I think, okay, we're putting a Band-Aid on it and then in a few years we're going to have to come back. Uh, it's not a temper. It's, it's not a permanent solution. Yeah, I mean, it's true it's not a permanent solution. I mean, it's the best thing we can do now to keep the bridge open. But as part of this effort, um, we have to take a look at the the joint between the bridge and the road and what MassDOT's engineers felt when they were out there Friday was that, you know, this particular joint configuration was allowing water and salt to, uh, you know, to get at the bridge and eat away at the beam. So, uh, you know, we should do some preventive medicine there and and uh, you know rebuild that joint with a different design possibly so it doesn't allow so much water and salt to get in there and corrode the steel and um, my other comment would be this is I've been here eight years and I've never seen any request ever come before the council to use stabilization ever and I think it's because of the fact that we used to have play money Eight, prior to the eight years where we would just spend what we don't have and so anytime someone utters the words spending stabilization everybody goes and hides under the desk because for some reason in the city of Fitchburg touching stabilization is like the third rail um, 
this would be a prime candidate for that money. And I know free cash, stabilization, pick your poison, but you know we continuously underfund the schools and we use free cash for these capital infrastructure projects. This is an emergency. We might need that $100,000 for something else. This is, an, this is an exact example of where STABE is a good use of money. And I think the fear is if we touch that account, the DOR is going to go, oh, you were at 5.4 this year, and next year at 5.3. Oh, oh, you know, we're being responsible with the money, and we probably can put that money back in. I know that's not your call, but, and I'm not really criticizing the decision to go to available funds, but not once have I seen any money in that account touched. And I feel like there's this nervousness to use it. This is a major bridge repair. Um, and we're in month four of the fiscal year. We got eight months to go. Using $100,000 out of stabilization for a major capital repair is not a bad financial practice. Using it for recurring expenses and paying for things in the budget like we used to is bad. This is not that. So I, I would have preferred the money came out of that avenue um, or else I feel the stabilization is just there to tell the state, hey, look at us, we're doing great. You know, you know, sometimes we can use it. It's not going to hurt us. Thank you. Councilor Joseph. Two sixteen fifteen is before you. We have a motion and a second. What was the question? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It is unanimous. Thank, Thank you, you, Lenny. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak at the public forum? All have been heard. We move to the report of the Committee on Records. Councilor Green. Yes, I'd like to report that the minutes from the last meeting are in order. Move, move the report be adopted. Second. Motion and second that the Committee on Records report be adopted. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It is unanimous. Communications. We have one communication, Councilors. Um, it is addressed to uh, Calvin Brooks, Treasurer. Dear Mr. Brooks, the 2015-2016 <laughs> final budget and assessments were approved and certified by the Regional District Committee on September 2nd, 2015. Please note that the revised assessment figures represent a decrease to the original assessment approved at your annual city town meeting in spring 2015. The district has adjusted your quarterly assessment bill to reflect the changes. The revised fiscal year 2016 regional school district assessment, $1,974,155. Sincerely, Norman J. LeBlanc, Treasurer. Placed on file in the clerk's office. No, we placed on file in the clerk's office. Moving forward to the agenda. <coughs> Finance Committee report. Council Di Natale. Thank you. Finance met last Tuesday, October 13th, and took up the following 196.15, ordered that the City of Fitchburg hereby approves the expenditure of funds from Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency for the State Homeland Security Funding Program in the approximate amount of $3,699 for the purposes of said grant. That was adopted. 197.15, an order appropriate $700,000, same to be credited to Fitchburg Public Schools and charged against available funds. That was adopted. Dean Natale recused. 198.15, an order appropriate 90000 seemed to be credited to Veterans Benefits General and charge against available funds. That was adopted. 199.15, order appropriate 460000 seemed to be charged against available funds and credited to accounts as follows. 430000 to police personal services and 30000 to unclassified other employee benefits. That was adopted. 200-15, order appropriate 125000 seemed to be credited to police equipment and repair and charge against available funds. That was adopted. 20115, order appropriate 80000 seemed to be credited to police personal services overtime and charge against available funds. That was adopted. 202-15, order the mayor's third fiscal year 2016 supplemental budget totaling 56350 as follows. Police personal services, mechanics 16350 police equipment and repair, firearms 40000